Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Um, today, I wanted to go over and show you some of the items I carry with me when I uh, go for day hikes or outdoors or whatever. Um, I'll even bring it with me just when I go driving and that kind of stuff. Just have a little, just these things with me because you never know. You never know. But uh, I um, have a lot of old gear that I've been using for a long time. As you see up here, I do have, this is only a small portion of some of the things I have. Um, I do still use some of these products, uh, these items. I still go out and use them sometimes. Not all of them, but uh, yeah, they're still there. Uh, but anyway, um, what I use, what I primarily use uh, uh, for my everyday stuff uh, to carry is that I have this little, I think it's a 35 liter Monroe pack. It's from Berghaus. And um, it does have, I do, do, I do need to replace one of the Fastex right here, but uh, it still works, you know. I'm not too keen on the, the belt system. It's not very good, but I, I just don't, I don't want to take it off because it actually is attached to it. But it's a really good pack. It's a, it's a very uh, simple pack. What it does, what I have done though, is I have added uh, some elastic cord to the outside so I could actually throw uh, something wet on the outside. If, I'm, if, it, if I've been out and about and I got wet, I could put it on the outside, you know, I can even, you know, but I usually, in general, carry everything inside my pack. I, it just it drives me crazy seeing guys, they they put like a wool blanket on the outside of their pack, and they don't think that what if it what if it rains or if I if I sit in the dirt, you know that wool blanket is going to get get wet. Sure, wool still works when it's wet, but why why not just wrap it in something, you know, put it inside at least in a waterproof bag or um, uh, put it inside of a tarp, you know, and roll it up in the tarp, you know, like, a, like, like, like it was done uh, a long time ago. What I like to do is actually I have a canvas, a canvas sheet that I use uh, if I'm doing uh, that kind of camping. Um, I'll uh, roll the, uh, make a bed roll up inside of it, and then that way I can even put a, a what's called a thong. It's a, it's a wide piece of, uh, of leather or whatever through it after you've wrapped it up. And you can carry it over your shoulder like that. And you can put other stuff inside of it also. But it just sort of kills me to see people with that on the outside of their little rucksacks. Their ruck is empty practically and they have that. And then they'll throw like their wooden cup and they'll throw their gloves on the outside. And they say, well, because that way nothing inside is going to get wet or it won't get fungus. Like that. I mean, how long are you spending outdoors? I mean, a lot of people I knew when I was in the UK, when I did the bushcraft course, a lot of guys would carry on their belt their cups because instead of it sitting on your rucksack where it banged in, you, you risk losing it. If it's on your belt, you just put it on your belt, a little small clip or whatever. You can pull it off, you know, when you come up, to, especially the Brits, when it comes to getting their tea, I mean, they show up immediately with a mug. <laughs> so I have a little wooden cup. I do use it sometimes if I do, uh, uh, when I do, when I go outdoors, this kind of stuff that, but I'll show you in a minute why I don't necessarily carry it with me uh, um, because I'm trying something else out right now and uh, I plan on expanding on it. Anyway, so I, I use a Monroe 35 liter backpack and inside of it, I will carry my uh, Kifaru. It's a big poncho liner, okay? I can wrap up in that, it's super lightweight. I've had it for many years. Uh, it's actually attached to the bag. It's not a waterproof bag, but it's a water resistant bag, but it doesn't matter. I'm ex-military, I put it inside of a waterproof bag. This was a little bigger, and I'm not one of those types who who who, uh, who believe in it's got to perfectly fit. Um, I'm one of those types that believe that if I have an extra big bag, guess what I can put in there? I can use it for other things. I can put, you know, my bag, not only will, will this fit in it, but I can also throw extra socks, underwear, t-shirt, whatever else I want to do. If I want to go out for the day on, on a hike and then along the river, and I want to go into the river, I can throw you know, some extra shorts in there, this kind of stuff. It'll protect it a bit, you know. It's all protected inside a waterproof bag, and that's what I use, okay? And this is a compression bag. I can put it all inside of it, you know, this inside of it uh, put without any problem, and I can compress it and put it inside the bottom, and that's where it goes. It goes first in the bottom of my rucksack, the last thing I want to do is pull that out. Now, if I'm at the beach, I can pull it out and lay it out on the grass, and it's in the bag, and it's waterproof. It doesn't want to get damp. I put it back in here. It's a day trip. I get back home. I let it hang, I let it uh, hang up and, and get some sun when I get home. But um, and if I'm going for several days, I definitely want to protect this. You know, you, you never know when the weather's going to change. So that's already a couple of items right there. My pack, 
and a, a waterproof bag with uh, my, uh, um, I can use it for sleeping unders. It's a poncho liner, basically, is what it is. And those of you who are not HUA infantrymen, you call it the Wooby. You know, I don't call it a Wooby. I never heard that the whole time I was in the Army, and I talked to guys. They must all be Cav Scouts. Anyway, <laughs> next thing I always carry with me, and it goes more on the top, but that is a, I carry a little, a little waterproof jacket. This is a North Face one. This is my second one I've had in 25 years. The first one's starting to delaminate now. I still have it. It's a gray one. And I got the same size, and this was a little bit bigger, which is nice, because I do have big shoulders and big chest and big arms, so this makes it really nice. I could actually throw it over something else, you know, uh, if I need to. So a waterproof jacket. This is a little, uh, I think it's a high vent. So it, it, it breathes. Um, it has underarm zippers, this kind of stuff, and, and, and a couple of pockets. It's quite nice with a hood on it, so I definitely carry this right here. Another thing I carry with me um, is a, I carry always a compass. And this actually, I've, I've attached the, these beads to it, and these are our pace count beads, actually, or, or ranger beads, some people call them. When I was in the Army, we called them ranger beads or pace count beads. I've had these for a long time. I have several types of these right here. I remember in the very beginning, we were just tying knots on a string when we were doing land nav or EIB, this kind of stuff. And then um, I found these beads and bought them, and I've had these same beads like forever in the army they were on my lbe right here you know uh so they're always with me they, this thing these have got plenty of parachute jumps on them lots of field exercises been to war this whole this whole thing but i attached these to my compass here and i've actually seen uh it's a a, um, a really good uh, guy who does uh, a survival video rangers survival, survival videos he's also a military guy and he puts a whistle here but i just I don't want a whole bunch of stuff dangling off of it, you know, and I can quickly put it in my pocket, you know. Now, it does come with a string, and this string has a purpose a lot of people don't know, and it's used for, for measuring. You can use it for measuring distances if you know how to do it. The thing is that these, it, this is useless if you don't know how to use it, and that's what I see a lot of people. I teach a lot of land navigation courses. A lot of guys have compasses, or they don't have a compass, and they have no idea how to use it. And so this is very important. So what I have in here is I only I don't just have the compass, but I also have I always carry a map of every, of the area I'm in if I'm going hiking, whatever. I have a couple of uh, I have a pen and a pencil in there I can use, and also have a protractor. Okay, so this all is inside of here and ready to go. The protractor's not in here because I actually use the protractor. I carry the protractor in something a little more solid, and I carry this. This is a um, a, a Schnigel gear schnegel tactical it's a swedish company they make this really good system it's a little you can write on this side right here uh it's got uh, um, a really nice it doesn't damage in, even in the cold it's a plastic um it's a it reminds me of the old elephant skin we used to have back in the army i have my patch out, uh, patch right here on it you know and inside of it is a you know a right in a rain tablet you know uh that i have in here and a little small pencil and i'm good to go with this right here now inside also i have my protractor in here it's it's slid up inside of here but uh yeah so i carry these items on me you know and this can go in a pocket or i just throw it with my my map and compass it goes in the pack these are um some i think this is from right in the rain and this is a um these are flash cards and so if I come up, come up on something I like, I want to write it down, whatever, I can pull these flashcards out and I can, I can use them, I can write on them like a class, if I'm taking a class or I'm giving a class, or if I want to give somebody some information, I can quickly write it on here and, and pass it on to them. So, but this is a really nice thing to also have with you. And then you can actually, like for here, I've, I've, um, I've got some information I wrote on the back is right here and I can quickly look at it if I need to. And I can also put it inside my Schnigel gear, um, uh, uh, notebook carrier. Um, another thing I carry with me um, is um, and um, is a first aid kit. And my first aid kit is a Care Plus, and um, it's a compact kit. But I've added things to it because I'm thinking not. I see a lot of guys who do ultralight stuff, and they carry a couple of band aids and maybe some mole skin with them. But I'm also trained in first aid, trained medical, uh, and so I have a few extra things. I also I carry. You know some meds for myself in here. I've got some bug spray in here. I've got some lip balm in here. I've got some. Uh, um, I got. I got so, so, a little pressure dressings and bandages in here because you never know what you're going. You know, it's not just for yourself, but for somebody else. Because there's always, 
there's always somebody out there on the trail who, who has nothing with them, who, who just does not prepared, you know. And working with the scouting movement, you know, the Boy Scouts of America, you got to always be prepared, you know. So this is something I carry with me, and uh, I carry it also in a, it has its own dedicated waterproof pouch, uh, and um, I keep it inside of it. And this is actually a perfect fit. It's one of those perfect fit kind of things. Uh, but um, I can get it inside of it and, um, you know, and wrap it up really well and put it in a good, a quick accessible spot in a location in my backpack. So this is another thing I carry with me. Another thing I carry with me also is a handkerchief. You never know when you, you know, you can use it for lots of things. If it's hot out or you want to put it on your head or, or you know, you wipe the sweat off or, or you can even actually, you want to pre-filter some water. You can put this over your container, pour the water in it, get, around, get, all, get all the the crud and that kind of stuff off of it. You can do that a couple of times and then you can, can boil a really good quick uh, story. We were at Camp McCall of, uh, at, um, on an exercise at Camp McCall in North Carolina and one of the guys went down to fill our canteens up and he took everybody's canteen from our team and went down and uh, came back and um, um, we all had to, we all threw our ID, uh, our iodine tablets in there and had to wait 30 minutes, you know, and I remember, um, you know, drinking mine and it was okay, you know, a couple of little baby twigs and that kind of stuff. But I remember he, 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 you know, bottles up his, his and spit out a dead, uh, a dead fish. <laughs> it was quite funny because he'd actually, uh, when he was doing it, he just, you know, he didn't, he, there's no pre-filter. He just filled them up from the lake that's right there at Camp McCall. And, uh, and if any of you've been out there, you know what lake I'm talking about. It's got lots of little stuff in it, you know, and, uh, um, good fishing too. But, uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, he caught like, I think it was a tadpole maybe or something like that. And, uh, um, yeah. So, but he, he got a mouthful of it. So anyway, it's good to do a little pre-filter. A t-shirt can do it also, but this right here, something I carry with me and I can quickly just pull it out and, and just into a, um, into a, 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 a container. I can easily just pour the water into that. Do a quick pre-filter. It gets it gets a lot of debris out of there, and you do it a couple of times, and then you can boil the water if you, if you like or whatever. You know, which, which you should do, or you can treat it, or uh, um, even to save on your filter, your water filter. Because I have a an MSR. You can see it right there, and I love this little thing. It does two liters per minute, but now the it's it's got it's starting to. I've had it for twelve years, and it's, and I've changed the filter a couple of times, but it's starting to taste like mud again, and, and I gotta. I think the filter is cracked also, um, but I need to replace it. But um, it really is a sad day for me to have to replace a filter because I don't like having to replace stuff. I like to use it to it's you know forever. But I have gotten some years out of it, and um, I, yeah, I need to come up with a better um, another one. I'm thinking about maybe trying the Sawyer system out. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. This uh, this whole concept of the Sawyer system, uh, but uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see how it works out. Anyway, so. Uh, this right here. I also do carry um, sunglasses with me and I'll throw a, a hat. Uh, if it's uh, a lot of sun out, I'll throw my Tilly hat, which is a big wide brim hat, or, or I'll wear a baseball cap, this kind of stuff. My Tilly hat's actually in my car because I usually keep it with me. When, when I go somewhere, I just I can pop it on my head. And uh, I've had that for a long time. I've had people, it's so old, I've had people actually offer to buy it from me uh, because it has that patina, you know, that sweat patina, <laughs> that old patina. And of course I don't because, you know, I got that when I did the Ray Mears course at the end of the course, I sucked for a week. I mean, I'd, you know, baseball caps are nice, but when you're in the UK, a baseball cap is crap. And, um, I found out very quickly in November of that year, just how much rain they get on a minute by minute basis. And I think the only sunny day we had was the last one, um, maybe one during it, you know. But um, a Tilly hat, everybody had their Tilly hats on. And I, I, bought, I got mine at the very end of the course, and I wish I had it the entire course because it was a really um, good uh, thing to have. Anyway, so another thing I carry with me are some gloves. Now, I carry different types of gloves. These are some actually leather work gloves that have, that are, have protection on them, you know. And you can wear these uh, all year round. And uh, they breathe a little better than the all leather gloves. Now, I do have all leather gloves, too. It depends on. I also have some mechanic gloves. But the problem with mechanic gloves, they're a little bit uh, sensitive in the, in the fingers. So they, they wear out very quickly, you know. And I just lost a pair. I, they're lost. For, they're not really lost. I know where they're at. I just need to go get them. But they're in the woods. 
attached on a tree. <laughs> and I left them there when I left. I was looking all on the ground before I left. I didn't think about looking at eye level on a tree. And they're still, they could still be hanging up or maybe someone snagged them and, uh, um, in the woods um, only about two kilometers from here. <laughs> and if they're using them, I'm happy for them. But uh, anyway, I need to replace them. But uh, I have a pair of gray ones up here somewhere. And But these right here are actually quite good. Um, um, I use them for working outdoors, that kind of stuff with them. And they're an all leather glove. They breathe very well in the back back of them, you know. And they have a, they're really good. I, like, I actually like this because they have a really strong leather pad here on the front, but it's actually quite, uh, quite useful. I really like these gloves. So these gloves right here, of course, are with me. And they keep me a little warm, you know, so... Uh, they're not too bad. They're not wool, but uh, they're fine. I do have some wool liners and some, uh, that, that are they're really good, and I carry those in the winter time. I can always put those on if I'm a little little cold out. But uh, another thing I carry with me and um, is my possibles bag. This possibles bag is one from the Hidden Woodsman. I've got this one right here, and I've got a saw, a saw a pouch also. I have a little bokeh saw with me up there, and if I go on overnight stuff, I'll carry the bokeh with me. But this right here is pretty good because you can actually attach it to your belt. If you want to. Now, I, I used to attach it to my belt, but I don't like a lot of things dangling off my belt, so I stick it inside my bag, but I can always put it in there. And inside of it, it's got a lot of stuff. I've got my Petzl uh, 350 lumen Petzl headlamp, which I carry with me. <laughs> and um, I carry oof, I carry some cord with me also. This is some, some lighter cord, you know, and this is actually reflective type cord. So if you set it up at night, you can it reflects. Um, I have inside of here also uh, some more reflective cord. This is actually the, the bigger part. I've actually used some of that right there. And this is a, a thing right here, a black nylon cord. It's a little lighter than, 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 than parachute cord. I got my whistle with me right here too. Um, I've got um, a little bag. And inside this bag, I have some wax string, some wax thread, my spare batteries for my Petzl. And I have some some matches right here. Now I don't put these, these matches are like light anywhere matches, which which are waxed. And I have a lighter, and this lighter is a butane lighter, which I can refill. And I think I paid five bucks for it like that. But the advantage of it is uh, is that it um, it it's like a jet lighter, you know. This thing, man, it really puts a flame out there, so you can intensely put a flame on something. But it actually works pretty well. And then I have my my fire. Uh, kit you know and with this right here I, on the top of it is a what we call in over here a loop but it's a magnifying glass right here you can use to get your it's a it's a london it's a london something uh tobacco tin is what it is and inside of it and i keep it inside of it i have some primitive fire stuff in there um, um i have some some fungi here also i have my uh, i have some flint and steel in here I have some, um, I actually have some beeswax candles in there. I have some, um, some char in here also. And I have some uh, fat wood in here. It's not a whole lot, but I tell you what, you'd be surprised. I even have some, uh, some, uh, um, some birch bark rolled up in there. <coughs> it's more of a primitive kit, but it works really well. And I keep it on me, with me, <coughs> whenever, you know, whenever I go out. Because, you know, I had this situation happen to me a long time ago. I was back when I was married and the, and the kids were little we went on a little hike and we brought food with us to grill and we get out there I get out there and I had nothing to, to use to make fire with so <clears throat> it was really nice that following birthday my ex-wife at the time she she agreed for me to get to go to the Ray Mears course for my birthday so that's what I did and um I got to relearn fire building again, something, a skill that I already, I grew up learning to do, but uh, I really got to do it on a, on a level that was much better, much more intense, and I really appreciated it. Something else I carry with me, light sticks. I have two green and two red ones. They're pretty abused in the packaging, this kind of stuff, but I car carry those with me, and um, because they're, you know, lights are part of communication. You know, you have your cell phone with you, or if you have a radio, but lighting is also a form of communication, you know, green for good, good and, and red for, you know, so for emergency or, or hurt. And so is your, 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 
your um, your headlamp, you know. So you can use it to uh, to spit out SOS or to give a signal, this kind of stuff. So it's it's quite important, you know, to to ha to to know these things. You know, not just carry a fire kit, but how to use it. Not just carry a first aid kit, but how to use it. Not just to carry. Uh, these things, but how you can use them in an emergency situation is, is so important. So, so important. Another thing I carry with me, and this, this right here is probably my newest thing. It's, it's the newest thing, actually, I carry with me. And this is my water, uh, water and cooking kit for day stuff. You know, now if I go out for other things, I'll carry my jet boil with me if I'm, you know, on a, on a lightweight hike or just kind of stuff like that. Uh, because you can't always build fires uh, in here where I live uh, because of um, in the summertime, especially the, um, the, the it's very dry out. And, and if you build a fire, you can start a fire and you don't want to be <laughs> the person who has to um, pay for someone's home. That's for sure. Anyway, so this right here is a uh, key. It's a Helicontex. Um, it's one of their, I think it's their, their SOS or their survival pouches. You can actually attach it with Molly's system on the back or you can carry it, you know, on a, um, on a shoulder strap. And it's quite heavy. What I don't like about it is the weight of it. And that's because um, of this system right here that I have in it. This is the Pathfinder uh, stainless steel um, canteen. And, and with it, I also have the, um, the cup cover, the actual cup itself in here which I'm not too keen on this cup because it's the World War II style of cup, which is this, this system that, that does this right here. I don't like that. I prefer the later model that came out with the, um, with the loops. I, I just, I would rather have that. One thing I do like about it, it does have the measuring inside because if you're boiling water, this kind of stuff, you want to have your measuring in this. I have used it. Uh, you can see the patina in the bottom. I have used it. I've cleaned it. Uh, but uh, the... Uh, of course, the stove is a little bit blackened right here, and I've, I've used it. I've tested it several times. I do like it. I like the system. It's just heavy. Uh, right now, I'm going to look at later on getting the uh, uh, to trying a titanium system out. There's another company that produces a titanium version, a little bit more square. I do like this canteen because it has a large mouth on it, uh, and the larger, the more you drink, you know, and this actually has water in because I just used it um, for a little hike yesterday. Uh, and the water stays fresh in it, which is really nice too. It's, and it's not a vacuum system. It's just, it just that stainless steel holds on to the temperature. But I carry that. Another thing I carry in here is a long titanium spoon, which I use for lightweight hiking, that kind of stuff also. <laughs> I just happen to have an MRE spoon in here, which is sort of funny as can be. I still, and I have a little fork I got. And it's actually not bad, it's a little fork, you know? Now, of course, I can take these things out, put these things in there. It, it all works. Um, and I, I, like I said, I, 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 for me, one thing I also like about this pouch is it has a pockets, little sleeves inside of it to sort of store stuff. And I can quickly and easily store uh, the lid to the cup holder. All this stuff sort of, all this stuff goes, well, actually what I don't like about it is that it, it has to put this in here first before you can do all this with it, you know. Makes a lot, makes a lot of terrible noise too. But, um, Anyway, so, and you can put all this stuff inside this pouch. It fits really well. It's a really good pouch. Now, you can use a regular plastic canteen in here also and stuff like that. It works just as well. But the system is uh, that I've, that I, and I didn't come up with this. I'm sure someone else did. I'm just happy that I, that, I, that, I, that I have it, and I'm happy that it works really well, you know. So, it's a good system. Now, tools. I don't carry a whole lot of tools with me. There are five tools that I look at that, that are must to be carried. One of them is a good fixed blade knife. Another one is a handsaw, an axe, a curved blade knife for whittling, for you know, for make, making cups, that kind of stuff, and an, and a little auger, something that you can penetrate. Now, normally, and I have my Swiss Army knife that I've been carrying for 35 years. That is, uh, that has my little auger on it, a little corkscrew, this kind of stuff. It's a nice little knife. I use it for little small things, like if I'm cooking and opening up package that kind of stuff but normally i've had i use this knife here and i've had this knife for a long long time i got it on the, i ordered it on the ray mirrors course it is the ray mirrors knife designed by ray mirrors made by andy wood you can see that i don't know how many of these were produced but uh and at the time it cost a pretty penny but i keep it sharp i've used it countless times it doesn't all, I mean, it's got a really good, uh, um, 
the, this edge of the blade right here for striking. I do have a fire steel. I have a ferrocene rod with me. I have a little sharpening stone with me. Uh, one thing I don't have is like a big needle on the back of it, which is something I have been pick, I have picked up from the um, from what I see now. Is a lot of guys are, are using needles, that kind of stuff, uh, and I think that's a great idea. So that's something I should add to it, add to my kit. And I'll put it inside my kit. You know, I actually I do have needles inside the kit with the uh, with the wax um, thread. I do have some needles in there. It's just true, and they're quite heavy duty needles. Uh, quite thick needles, but yeah, I've been using this knife for a long time, and I have I have several knives. Uh, another one I have, which actually stays in my car, is a, is a Fall Kneven, and it's the Uden, and it's the I love that little knife. It's got probably one of the it's one of the best little knives I've ever used. I'm not too keen on the sheath, but I do love that knife, and it's a really nice knife. Uh, and and you got to keep them sharp, you know. So it's imp not, it's also important that not only do you do you if you carry a knife, but you got to know how to take care of it and how to keep it sharp, you know. And uh, my dad told me a long time ago um, that it's still, uh, you know, uh, a knife that's not sharp is just a stick. And that's all it is. It's just a blunt object you can, you know, beat something over with. But this knife right here is actually split wood. It's done a lot of stuff with it, you know, and, and um, I'm, I really like this knife right here. It's, 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 the, it's the knife I, I go to every time. I carry with me all the time. Another thing I do carry, like I said, I carry a little, um, I carry also on my daily stuff, you know, I look, my little, um, um, I think it's called the camper version of the um, of the uh, Swiss Army knife. I highly recommend it. And another tool I carry with me some you know, quite often is this tool here, which you can't even get them anymore. I don't think. I don't think. I think you stop making. It's the Leatherman um, um, a Skelly tool. This is the CK or something like that. CX. It's. Um, it's a nice little, it's a nice tool, actually. It's a very nice tool. It's very lightweight because they have some very heavyweight ones out there. And this one actually is quite lightweight and it will do the job. It has a knife on it. It has a little little bits on it, you know, for, for you know. Now, of course, you're not going to find any screws on any trees, that kind of stuff. But if you want to do some certain kind of repairs or certain kind of little things with it, this little knife will do it, you know. It will. It does the job. And it's a, it's a good little knife, you know, and I, I like it a lot. I like its use. Now, it's been, I think it's been, I don't know, it's, yeah, it's one of the pieces that popped off, um, but it doesn't matter actually. I don't even know what that piece is. There's something about it that's, that's moving around there. But uh, believe it or not, I just found this knife because I've been <laughs> I've been looking for it forever, and I just found it today going through my stuff, you know. And uh, I'm so happy I found it because I love this little knife. Now I have a mutt, and uh, my son got it for me for Christmas one year, and that is the heaviest knife in the world. Now his fault, it's my fault. I chose it. But it's it's got all the tools on it for cleaning weapons and kind of like that, and it's not something I really need. But uh, it and I keep it in the car because it's it's like a little tool to have in the car too. But uh, this is a good little thing. I'm glad I found it. And you can easily just hook it to your to your belt loop or onto your you know somewhere inside your rucksack. Like I said again, I don't suggest you carry anything on the outside of your pack if you don't have to. You know, and if you find yourself having to put your bed linen that kind of stuff on the outside of your pack where it can get damaged and wet and all this kind of stuff. Get yourself a bigger pack. You know, it's just that simple. You know, um, Hidden Woodsman right now has a really nice their jungle pack. You know, a tropical pack they call it. It's a really nice little pack. You have to put it on the Alice frame, which is the only thing I, I don't like about it because I prefer not to use a frame uh, necessarily on a light lightweight pack. But I haven't actually touched the pack yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's funny because when you put a pack on my back, the pack looks much smaller than it does in the pictures on the guys who who are modeling, which are like extra small. So it always gives them the impression that. They have these huge packs on. But anyway, that's the stuff I carry with me. I will throw in some snacks, this kind of stuff, on these day trips, some like granola bar type stuff or a couple of chocolate bars, whatever. Something that's not going to ruin if it depends on the temperature. And, uh, and yeah, so that's what I basically carry with me uh, for a little day trip, a little day hike, you know, and um, here in the mountains in Switzerland or through the forest. I do a lot of forest walking and hiking, you know, and, 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 uh, and yeah, so... That's the stuff I have. So if I were to, uh, things were to change, you know, and I, even, I could even use that to stay overnight at someone's house because I have a blanket with me, you know, so I can easily sleep on the floor and throw that on, you know, so, or sleep on the couch and they don't have to come up with a blanket. So I have my own with me. But uh, anyway, that's all. That's that's basically the stuff I'm carrying. Now, of course, something else I have in there, and I think everybody's carrying nowadays also, one of these little masks. Uh, that's also in my bag. But um, yeah, that's all part of it. But anyway, 
this this video has gone on long enough. It's almost 30 minutes, and um, I want to thank you all for um, coming to my channel and watching my videos. Um, I hope that um, I hope to make some more of these kind of videos here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some kit review, and as we go along and do more and more uh, kit stuff because I'm going to open my own business. I'm going to start selling stuff online. Uh, in the very beginning, I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of stuff that I've collected and, and given and had for many years. I'm not here to extort anybody, but uh, I will be doing a little bit of that. And then I plan on uh, start selling more bushcraft and outdoor stuff in the, in the future online. But anyway, I want to thank you all for coming here. And again, I hope you have a good, a good day and I hope to hear from you soon. Please leave your comments down below. I like criticism. Unlike a lot of people who can't handle it, I can handle it. Uh, if you got something that you think suggest I should add to my list, let me know. And uh, if you have any questions about anything I carry, please let me know that also. And uh, give me a, a thumbs up, a like, and please uh, subscribe to my channel um, and so you can receive any updates. I talk about everything, not just the outdoor stuff, but also uh, uh, anything and everything. So anyway, listen, I hope to hear again from you soon, and I hope you all have a really pleasant day. Take care. Bye.